In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Chen ER diagram between two entities or a binary relationship. So I have two entities already created in rectangles, student and class. And the first thing you're going to decide is, well, yes, I need to join those two. And I'm going to create a relationship, a student takes or a student enrolls in a class. So I'm going to come here and grab a diamond shape and then add the text enrolls here. So we're showing that relationship there. Now before we move on, let's add some attributes to student and to class, including the primary key. So attributes in Chen model will simply look like ellipses. Let me draw a couple ellipses here. So let's say this contains the last name field. And let's say that our primary key is going to be student ID. And in the Chen model, what you're going to do is that's required. So I'll make that bold. And when you underline it in the Chen model, then that means that's the primary key field. And let's say uh, major is going to be another field we have in here. And of course, there's many more fields. If you recall, when you applied at HCC, every field that you filled out on the web application form is probably a field in your student table. And what we're going to do is draw some lines. And you get the idea. You would have many, many more fields than that, but that's a start. And we'll do the same thing for class. Okay, so I've got some attributes around class. You can see that class ID, because it's underlined as the primary key. It's also bold. All primary keys are required. Class format, I say that's required. Online hybrid in the room. And professor ID, I've got that italicized. That's going to be a foreign key uh, related to the professor table. The next thing I do after I decide all the attributes is one to one, one to many, many to many. So I take one student, Jim Bell, and I say, well, how many related records, what will there be in class? Now, really, I don't care if it's going to be 15 or two. All I care about is it going to be at the most one related most, the most, you hear that? Is it at the most one or is it more than one? Well, a student can enroll in more than one class. So right here, that's going to be a many. And then we do the same thing the other way. So we're going to take one class, let's say this database class. How many students over here can be related to this database class? There's 30 students in the class. And of course, all we really care about this point is, is it one or is it many? And it is many. And I'm going to write an N there. And the reason I do an N instead of an M is to mean, say, you know, this might be 30 and this might be six. They don't have to be the same value. But in the end, they're many to many. So conceptually, I'm done. I've got two uh, entities in a many to many relationship. But logically, you're not going to be able to implement this because you can't implement a many-to-many. -many. What you need to do when you see a many-to-many -many is now in Chen, I like how Chen does that, is I'm going to draw a box around this diamond that means the relationship. And this is a box. It's a rectangle just like that. It's a rectangle and that's a rectangle. This will be implemented as an entity we're going to call it a composite entity. So the entity that's created to resolve the many-to-many -many relationship is called composite entity. Well, we're not done because entities are going to have attributes. And whenever you create a composite entity, you're going to take the primary key of both of the tables that were in the many-to-many -many relationship and you're going to make them foreign keys. I'll just copy my class ID and put it over here. And I'll copy my student ID and I'll put it over here and connect those two 
to my new composite entity. These two as a whole, now this is not part of the diagram, this is me emphasizing the fact that those two primary keys that came over to join as fields in the composite entity are now a composite key. This is a composite primary key. So I have composite entity, I have a composite primary key. Why is that a composite primary key? Let's say I have student ID 14. He's enrolled in class two. Because that's a primary key, 14 can only enroll in two once. It's got to be unique. Notice this is going to prevent student 14 from enrolling in class two 55 times. He can only enroll in class two once, which makes sense. Next, you might be wondering, well, can we add more attributes to the composite entity other than that composite primary key? And the answer is yes. So, for example, when I see the list of students enrolled in my class, I can see the date they enrolled. So, there might be a field called date enrolled here. Let's go in and consider the modality or minimum cardinality. Can I have a student that does not enroll? And yes, that's optional. You can put your application in and decide not to sign up for any classes. So with optionality, what you're going to do is you're going to draw a little circle right on that line there, a little open circle. Let's go the other way around. Let's take a class. Uh, does there have to be any students enrolled in it? And when that class is created, my guess would be I'm not going to require a student to be in the class, so that too will have an optionality. So that is the start of our ER diagramming. In the next video, you'll see that this is an iterative process. So now maybe I have a prof ID here, so I know I'm going to now take prof professor as a table and, and consider the relationship between class and professor. And I see a major and there might be a major lookup table and I'll consider the relation between student and major. And can a student have a double major, for example? So this is an iterative process. You build a little and you keep adding and adding until you have your complete database diagram, ER diagram. But if you take one step at a time, you'll be able to do it.